the Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Gene Carroll, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. I've had quite a few questions lately about how to take care of the new blonde furniture that's so popular today. Well, I'd like to offer a word of advice. Four words to be exact. Use Johnson's Cream Wax. Cream Wax is Johnson's newest wax polish, and it was specially designed for your furniture and white woodwork. This remarkable wax is creamy white, easy to use, needs very little rubbing, and it cleans as it polishes. Johnson's Cream Wax actually contains two cleansing ingredients... So the fingerprints and smudges disappear like magic. This isn't an exaggeration either, as you'll realize the very first time you try it. Cream wax is perfect for all furniture, for your dining room table and sideboard, for kitchen tables and chairs, and all kinds of white kitchen equipment. Johnson's cream wax leaves a hard, smooth wax film for protection. Gives a rich, lustrous, non-oily polish. You probably already use Johnson's paste and liquid wax... Well, now try Johnson's Cream Wax. You'll like it. When Mrs. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista looks out the window and sees her normally slow-moving husband running like a deer toward home, she naturally thinks, A, he's put a lighted cigar in his pants pocket again... B, she must be dreaming, or C, it must be somebody else. But no, it's himself, all right. And here he comes as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. Hey, Molly. Hey, Molly, where are you? Hey, hey, Molly. I'm right here, dearie. (laughs) Don't say another word till you get your breath. I've just... I haven't seen you run that fast since the bees took a fancy to your lilac hair tonic. Yeah, but... And now, I, now, now, take a few deep breaths. A, You're too old for those short pants. <laughs> <laughs> now then, dearie, who's chasing you and for what? And do I tell the police you've been here all day? Look, this is important. I gotta have my coin catalog. Quick, get me my coin catalog. I gotta have it. All right, all right. It's right there on the bookshelf. Huh? Between Tom Swift and his electric rifle and the National Geographic, August 1927. Hand me to it quick. Thanks. Aha. Ah, baby, I got a small fortune right here in my little fat hands. That's what I got a small fortune in my little fat. Now, let me see. You had an offer for your coin catalog? (laughs) You only paid 30 cents for it. No, no, no. I found a rare coin. What other kind is there? I knew that'd get him. <laughs> this is an 1880 quarter. Must be worth... Now, let me see. 1880. 18... Ah, here we are. <laughs> Ten bucks. Imagine that. This quarter's worth a fast saw buck. Feast your beautiful blue, blue peepers on that, Snooky. <laughs> your blue peepers. So uh, what date did you say? 1880. Look at it. Well, you must have been carrying it a long time. It now says 1916. Huh? <laughs> let me see that. Oh, my gosh, this is the wrong coin. You know what I did? I bought eight cigars at Kramer's Drugstore and gave him the wrong quarter. You mean he charges 25 cents for eight of those smudge pots? (laughs) I could make better cigars out of corn husks and old carpets. That ain't the point. The point is I left my $10 quarter down there. Come on, get your hat. I got to go down there and get my quarter back. Oh, no, you go on, dearie. I can't go. I have so much housework to do here that... Now, you don't have to worry about the housework, Mrs. McGee, honey. I'll take care of everything. You know, I treat everything in this house just like it was my very own. <laughs> yeah, I know you do, Lena. Yeah, that's some of my wife's... <laughs> That's some of my wife's our paste perfume you got on, isn't it? It sure is, Mr. McGee. Yeah. You know, I was cleaning her dressing table and happened to spill a little dab right behind my ears. <laughs> That's all right, Lena. I hope you put the stopper back in the bottle. Oh, I did, honey. Mm-hmm. I was very careful because you got the swellest smelling perfume of any place I ever worked. <laughs> 
You know, Mama always told me that you can tell a lady by her perfume and a gentleman by the way he acts when he smells it. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. McGee's in a hurry to go, Lena, because he left a valuable coin down at Kramer's Drugstore. Well, now, you just go down there and get it, Mr. McGee. Goodness me, I know exactly how you feel, because I had an uncle once who collected coins. Oh, that's a very interesting hobby, Lena. I always oh, it say... was strictly business with him, Mr. McGee. He was a bus driver. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Such a handy fella he was. You know, he could open and shut the door, make change, blow the horn, shift gears, scratch his neck, and argue with the customers all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them do it, Lena. I've always... Oh, wanted... he gets so tired of... He quit and got married, you know. Mm, I don't blame him, Lena. If I was a bus driver... Oh, you ought to see him now. <laughs> Sitting on the front porch, rocking the baby, reading the paper, sprinkling the lawn, peeling potatoes, scratching his neck, and arguing with his wife all at the same same time. <laughs> well, if you're going down to Kramer's, McGee, you better get started because somebody might get that quarter. Oh, you're so right, kiddo. Come on, well, let's go. Oh, I don't think I should. The house... Oh, honey, now you go right along. And while you're down at the drugstore, get Mr. McGee some new razor blades. I got plenty of razor blades, Lena. I just bought a new Oh, package. they're no good now, Mr. McGee. I used them all up splitting peas for the soup tonight. Huh? <laughs> you know, it's quite a job with those frozen peas. <laughs> oh, zippity doo da. Oh, come on, kid, let's get going I'm ready, McGee So you see, Kramer, when I bought those cigars I gave you that 1880 quarter by mistake You'll know it when you see it A very shiny one McGee says it's worth... It's worth a lot to me, Kramer Sentimental value, you know uh, graduation present. You got a quarter as a graduation present? <laughs> it was a lot of money to him then. He was only six. You graduated when you were six, McGee? Uh, from kindergarten. <laughs> Class president, too. <laughs> Made the best May baskets of any kid in school. <laughs> Come on, Kramer, let's go through the cash register. All right, McGee. Ooh, boy. Yeah. That's all the change in the store, McGee. Take a look through those. Well, thanks, boy. Nope. 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 Billy Mills in the orchestra, and I got a girl in North and South Dakota.
here it is. Here's the... Oh, no, that's 1889. Nope. 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 Dead rat. Nope. <laughs> nah, it isn't here. Have you looked at everyone carefully, dearie? I've been through the whole pile three times. I've looked at more uninteresting dates than an Arab on a diet. <laughs> hey, Kramer, you give that quarter to somebody in change, did you? Well, I wouldn't be a bit surprised, McGee. This is a drugstore, not a piggy bank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> money comes in, money goes out. To me, a quarter is just a round, flat piece of metal worth about four cents after overhead and taxes. <laughs> Well, it hasn't been so very long since McGee was in here before, Mr. Kramer. Can you remember who got any quarters in change? Yeah, yeah. Think, Kramer. Think. Think. You're a college man. Well, just two years. <laughs> How many customers have you given change to in the last half hour, Mr. Kramer? As the cannibals said when they caught the fat missionary, let's boil it down and see what we've got. <laughs> Well, uh, let me see now. Uh, Ken Bartlett came in and he bought an ice bag, but he gave me a check. Uh, Mr. Wimple bought a Rocket Man comic book, but that was only ten cents. So, uh, oh, wait a minute. Well, he got five dollars change into quarters. That must be where it went, Mr. Mr. Wimple. Heavenly days, Mr. Wimple. What do huh? he want five bucks in quarters for, Kramer? Well, I don't like to gossip, Mr. McGee, but I think he was going to play the slot machine in the back of Joe's barbershop. Hmm. I thought slot machines were illegal in Wistful Vista. They are. At least a police lieutenant told me they were. Where'd you see him? He was playing the slot machine in the back of the door. Well, how long ago did Mr. Wimple leave, Mr. Kramer? Well, he left just before you came in. He was walking, so possibly you can catch up with him. Well, I'll say we can. Much obliged, Kramer. Come on, Molly. There's a taxi cab, dearie. Swell. Get in, kiddo. Hey, driver. Follow that man. Right. Hey, Mac. Yes? What man? <laughs> what? Oh, just go to Joe's Barbershop, driver. Okay, babe. And don't be afraid to go through the red lights, bud. I got influence. Mac, I wouldn't push this heap over 30 miles an hour if you was J. Edgar Hoover. Mm. My tires is strictly pre-war bubble gum. And I got three cylinders which their mothers ain't heard from them since 1937. <laughs> and furthermore... Oh, McGee, there's Mr. Wimple crossing the street. Stop, driver. Oh. Stop the car. Ooh, she's going to get them brakes fixed. Hey, Wimp, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. How much, driver? 35 cents, Mac. There's no cover charge on account of the top leaks a little. Here, driver. Here's 50 cents. Keep the change. Lady, you're a gentleman. Ah, success within my grasp. Hi, Wimp. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Hello, folks. <laughs> hey, Wimp, Kramer says you gave he gave you five bucks in quarters. Yes, he did, Mr. McGee. Uh, let me see them, will you? I got reason to believe my lucky pocket piece is in there with them. An 1880 quarter. Oh, isn't that too bad? What? <laughs> what do you mean, too bad? Well, I put all those quarters in the slot machine, Mr. McGee. The whole five dollars worth. Oh, my God! Now, wasn't that a little foolish, Mr. Wimple? You know you can't beat those slot machines. Uh, what do you get out of it? Well, I was doing it for Sweetie Face. That's my big old wife. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the slot machine for Sweetie Face? Well, <laughs> I am in a way. Feel my right arm, Mr. McGee. Huh? Oh, my gosh, Wimp. You got muscles like a handful of steel cables. You would, too, if you'd yanked that slot machine handle down as often as I have, Mr. McGee. It's been expensive exercise, but I'm almost ready. Almost, <laughs> almost ready for what, Mr. Wimple? I'm almost ready for Sweetie Face to start picking on me again. Uh-oh. A week ago Sunday, she said, Wallace, you know what day this is? And I said, yes, dear, it's Easter. And she said, yes, and here's a little present for you. Oh. And then she gave me such a rabbit punch, I couldn't eat anything but carrots all day long. <laughs> Look, Wimp, that's all very interesting, but what about my 1880 quarter? You mean I gotta go hang around Joe's barbershop and wait till somebody hits the jackpot? Oh, somebody already did, Mr. McGee. What? They did? Yes. After I put my five dollars in, somebody came along with one quarter and hit the jackpot. My, was he lucky. Well, gee whiz, why didn't you say so? I did. Who was it? Harlow Wilcox. He said that he was... Oh, my goodness. Look at those two go. I wish I could drag my wife around like that. (laughs) 
So when Mr. Wimple told us you would hit the jackpot on the slot machine, Mr. Wilcox, we came right over to see you. Dump those quarters out on the desk here, Junior, and I'll pick out my 1880 quarter. Pal, look, I've got bad news for oh, you. Oh, please, Mr. Wilcox, you didn't spend it. You didn't give it away. You didn't do any... No, 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 no. Let me explain. Oh. Uh, here, sit down, Molly. You too, pal. Oh, okay. Now, look, you see this folder? It tells all about Johnson's car new, the most popular car polish in America. Yes, it's very pretty, the but... The quarter, Junior, my 1880 quarter. You said no, you no, had... No, 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 no. Don't rush me. Look at that folder. You see where it tells about how Carnew is a liquid car polish oui. that you just apply and let dry to a white powder? Oui. And when you wipe it off, it takes the dirt and dust and road grime with yeah, it. But what that got to do with my Well, course? I was showing this folder to some people in Joe's barber shop, you see. Uh... I explained that Carnew, spelled C-A-R-N-U, is the easiest known method of cleaning and polishing a car. How it gives your car that showroom shine, that pre-war glitter, that mirror-like beauty. Yes, but Just what... then, I saw Wallace Wimple walking away from the slot machine. I dropped a quarter in it myself, and bingo, the jackpot. My quarter, Waxy. Doggone it, give me my quarter. Well, sir, the jackpot was $31.25, all in quarters. Naturally, I didn't want to carry all that silver around, so Joe gave me folding money for it. I put the money in an envelope and mailed it to the Society for Crippled Children. You mean, uh... You... You haven't got any of them quarters? Nope. Well, I guess that's that, then. I haven't had such a letdown since my suspenders busted at the junior prom. <laughs> now, wait a minute, McGee. Uh, you say there was uh, $31.25 in the jackpot, Mr. Wilcox. Yep. That extra quarter now, did you mail that to the... Say, I forgot that. There was one shiny quarter left over. And by George, I think it was 1880. Well, where is it? Where is it? Don't just do there and talk. Stand something. I mean, I... I... <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. What did I do with that quarter? Oh, I know. I gave it to Doc Gamble. Bought a trout fly from him. Come on, Molly. Let's go see Doc. Thanks, Waxy. <laughs> I'd like to see the doctor, nurse. How long is he going to be busy? I, I couldn't say, Mr. McGee. He has a full schedule of appointments. I've told him you were waiting. However, I must say... Take that... the medicine as prescribed, Miss Francis Creep. And no matter what it says in magazine articles, don't eat any more dried grass. <laughs> Come in again Friday. Now, who's next, Miss Dilver Prink? Hey, can I see you a minute, Doc, old man? It's a very important matter. Not if there's something more urgent. Is there, Miss Dilver Prink? I don't believe so, Doc. All right, come on in, McGee. Oh, hello there, Molly. Nice to see you. You come in, too. Well, thank you, Doctor. Take the leather chair, Molly. It's the only one that isn't patient sprung. <laughs> you sit... <laughs> you sit any way you like, McGee. Nature gave you cushions. <laughs> Now then, what's on your mind? Wilcox says you sold him a trout fly for two bits, Doc. Yes, and it's capital gain, too. <laughs> Medicine's my real business. Well, he's not interested in your income, Doctor, but he has reason to believe that quarter is one he's been looking for. Yeah, you see, I gave it to Kramer by mistake for some cigars. Those cigars you buy are a mistake in the first place. <laughs> Those aren't exported from Cuba. They're exiled. <laughs> but about this quarter, Doctor, we believe that we Oh, excuse could... me. Hello. Gamble speaking. Who? Oh, yes, Mrs. Clatterhatch. Mm, her again. <laughs> What's that, Mrs. Clatterhatch? Willie swallowed a cigarette lighter. Oh. Does he seem to be comfortable? <laughs> well, then don't worry about it, and I'll be over as soon as I can. But what are you doing in the meantime? Oh, that's right. Goodbye, Mrs. Clatterhatch. What is she doing in the meantime? Using matches. <laughs> Now then, uh, what about this quarter, McGee? I want it. What did you do with it? Well, on the way back to my office, I met Mayo La Trivia. Yeah? I bet him a quarter I'd been out with Fifi Tremaine more times than he had last month. Mm -hmm. And I lost. Then the mayor has it now? No, I don't think so. That red doc, quit torturing me, will you? I gotta have that quarter. What did La Trivia do with it? Well, he was on his way to buy some cigarettes when I left mm. him. And where does he usually buy his cigarettes, Doctor? At Kramer's drugstore. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is preposterous. <laughs> The King's Man, and I tipped my hat and slowly rode away. Had me two trusty pistols, had me two leather holsters hanging by my side. Had a two-gated pony till the day matrimony took my bridle and gave me a bride. I was riding down the trail to Santa Fe when I met a pretty gal along the way. I 
said, ain't we met before? Then she drew her 44. So I tipped my hat and slowly rode. I slowly rode away. I went riding down the trail to Santa Fe. When I met another gal along the way. I said, baby, you're a dream. She said, touch me and I'll scream. So I tipped my hat and slowly rode. I slowly rode away. Excuse for me to stay. Tip my hat. That was that. Yes, I left that kitten sitting where she sat. I continued down the trail to Santa Fe. When I met another gal along the way, I said, Are you taken too? She said, Partner, I'll take you. So I tipped my hat and settled down to stay. Settle down, settle down. Oh, my, it's good to be home again, isn't it, dearie? You said it. It was a tough chase, kiddo, but brains and perseverance finally won out. Lady Luck smeared a little lipstick on you, too. Yeah, I was kind of lucky at that. Look at this quarter, Snooky. 1880. Worth a cool ten bucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, now that you got your quarter again, uh, what are you going to do with it? Gonna look up a coin dealer tomorrow and sell it. I'll find one with an honest reputation and buy George. That's probably an honest coin dealer now. What? What's one more coincidence in a day like this? <laughs> Come in. Oh, Mayor Latrib, you do come in, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Latrib. Hello, McGee. I hear you've been having quite a fancy time tracking down an 1880 quarter. <laughs> oh, he certainly has, Your Honor. It was strictly e pluribus unum to phrase a coin. <laughs> <clears throat> We're running around town like a couple of dumb beagles after a wise rabbit. <laughs> Ooh, well, but I got it. <laughs> I finally got it. You see it? An 1882-bit piece worth <laughs> ten bucks. Gave Kramer a 1916 quarter for it, and he never knew the difference. <laughs> I didn't know you were a numismatist, McGee. Huh? Oh, no. <laughs> now, now, let's not get into any religious discussions, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> I didn't say anything about rel... <clears throat> <laughs> never mind. <laughs> You know, McGee, I had a similar experience to yours one time. When I was in the Coast Guard in the South Pacific, yeah. I had a short snorter bill signed by MacArthur and Eisenhower, and I missed it one day. Oh. That started a wild goose chase that lasted... A for wild many... goose chase? Heavenly days. That, that must have been difficult. Did you chase it in an airplane or something? Chase what? The wild goose. I knew a guy that lost a diamond stick pin when a crow flew down and picked it out of his necktie once. But a goose stealing money is something I never expected with a bill. A like wild that. goose had nothing to do with it. How far did you chase it before you found that out, Mr. Mayor? I didn't find it out. Hmm? I mean, it was not an actual goose chase. I merely used wild goose chase as a metaphor. I learned to signal by metaphor in the army, Latrid. <laughs> Had a little trouble with G and W about No, it, no, that was semaphore, McGee. Oh, no, it wasn't, kiddo. A semaphore is a kind of a Russian coffee pot. <laughs> That's a samovar, McGee. <laughs> Don't kid me, boy. <laughs> I know what a samovar is. It's a code word in the Air Force. Like when they say samovar aircraft are missing. <laughs> In any case, dear, your metaphor is just a literary comparison. Well, so what's so literary about a wild goose? I suppose he's going to try and tell us that uh, read the names on that short snorter bill, or... I didn't claim any such thing, McGee. Well, you... In the first case, 
I mean, in the first place, there wasn't any wild bill. But you said... I mean, the bill I lost was not... <laughs> when I said a child goose paste... What? Oh, no. I... Now, now, now. Take it easy, Your Honor. It's just a friendly conversation. <laughs> Relax, boy. Chuck's you fly off the handle like a $2 fishing reel. <laughs> now, why don't you try that again and don't drag your feet? <laughs> Very well. I started to say that I had a short snorter bill in the South Pacific that was signed by several famous military men. Yes? It was very valuable to me. Yes, and, and then one... a wild goose swooped down and swiped it. <laughs> Isn't that fascinating? A wild goose did not swipe down and swoop it. Huh? <laughs> Snoop it. What? Uh-huh. I said that the snort geezer... Huh? <laughs> the short snapper... <laughs> this bill I had in the South Pacific... Uh, for physic. Ooh. When I said a short snorter gapper, uh, snapped a short garter, <laughs> caught her in the goose behoofic. I was. It was in the. the I didn't say anything. You were the. Hard. McGee? <laughs> Yes? I used to collect coins myself. Did you really, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Did you say, McGee, that you gave Kramer a 1916 quarter for that 1880 quarter? Sure, why? <laughs> That's what I thought you said. Huh? <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I must go downtown. I have some good news for Mr. Kramer. <laughs> good day. <laughs> What did he mean he had some good news for Mr. Kramer? Oh, he was just... Hey, wait a minute. Hand me that coin catalog again. Here. 1912, 1914, 1915, 1916. Here it is. Oh, my gosh, look. Look what it says. 1916 quarter, $60. What? Oh, quick, we got to go to Kramer's. He'll be going to the bank. Here, here's your hat, dearie. This time you go alone. No. Every now and then, I hear of some homemaker who still takes care of her kitchen linoleum the hard way. Yes, actually scrubs it to keep it clean. What have I got against scrubbing? Well, it's plain hard work for one thing, and it's hard on linoleum. In time, it breaks linoleum down and makes it look ugly. What a different story when you use Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Then your linoleum not only has a smooth, bright shine at all times, it keeps its youth and beauty many years longer. You see, glow coat gives your floors a hard wax finish. This wax shield protects the surface, keeps dirt and moisture away from the actual linoleum. Constant harmful scrubbing is unnecessary because dirt and spilled things wipe right up with just a damp cloth. Why don't you try this easy glow coat method of keeping your floors always looking nice? Johnson's glow coat is so easy to apply, there's no rubbing or buffing because it shines as it dries. Ask your dealer for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. The floor finish with the brighter shine. Mr. Kramer before he went to the bank, McGee? Yep. You don't seem very happy about it. Nope. Did he know a 1916 quarter is worth $60? Yep. Oh. Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. NBC, the national broadcasting company.